Ciao, this is Claudia, your Italian teacher from Spangl Italian Learn Italian. This is a video that has been requested by many of my students because even my advanced students sometimes aren't absolutely sure when they should use buono instead of bello. It's, it's a bit confusing, isn't it? So I decided a video explaining everything would be a good idea. I also wanted to thank my 472 subscribers to this day. I really appreciate your support and I really appreciate and I hope that these videos are useful to you. Um, also, Mr. YouTube tells me that most of the people who watch my videos aren't actually subscribed. So if this is you, I suggest that if you would like to see more of my videos, you subscribe to the channel because otherwise YouTube will stop showing them to you. Okay? Grazie mille! Something else I wanted to tell you before we start with the lesson is that there will actually be a free PDF that you can download from the description box. There is a link that you click on it and it's not only the free PDF, I wanted to also announce my newsletter, Tirami Su, lift me up. It's going to be sent once or twice a month with uplifting stories to help you improve your Italian. And you will also get the occasional um, free mini lesson like this one and um, tips to improve your Italian. It's free and you can access it by going on the link in the description box and um, my aim is not only to help you with your Italian but also to bring a smile to your face. Okay, so enough chit chat, bando alle ciance, iniziamo! Okay, so first things first, by the end of this lesson you will know how bene, bravo, buono and bello translate to English. Why bene never changes form, but the other words do. So bene never becomes beni or beno or bena, it just stays as bene. <clears throat> you'll also learn that bello doesn't just mean beautiful, and you learn how to use them naturally like Italians do, because at the end of the video there will be a quiz. Allora, bene. It's an adverb, therefore it never changes form. Typically translates to well or good. It's often used to describe the manner in which something is done or the state of something. It's always used with a verb except essere, and I will see some examples. So you can say, sto bene, grazie, I'm well. It's not sono bene, it's sto bene. It's like when you ask, come stai? Come stai? Sto bene. Parli italiano molto bene. You speak Italian very well. And another one is va bene. Va bene. This is a very useful expression. Va bene. Okay. Or it's okay. Um, questa pizza va bene? Is this pizza okay? Sì, si, questa pizza va bene. Or you can just use it as bene, which a lot of my students know that I often say in lessons. So when we're moving from, from one thing to another, I always say bene. Okay. Bene. Allora. More examples. Which is, this is a, this, this one doesn't have a literal translation. So you say, oggi si sta bene. C'è un bel sole. Today is a lovely day. So this is the way you would say today is a lovely day. The sun is out. But the literal translation, so you understand, because I like literal translations because they're funny sometimes, you say, today one feels good. Today, oggi, si sta, one feels, si sta is the impersonal, uh, bene, good. There is, c'è, very important word, remember that, c'è, uh, un bel sole, a beautiful sun. Okay, and another very, very useful one that, um, especially if you are going on holiday, you would say, I had a lovely time. Or you tell your Italian friends, I had a lovely time, I had a great time, good time. Sono stata bene. So you don't use the word tempo for it translating time. It's, it's not something you can translate literally because it doesn't make sense. You just say sono stata or sono stato bene. 
So, uh, occhio, occhio is I, <laughs> and that's how you say be, uh, beware, pay attention. Remember that sono stata is the passato prossimo, so it's a past simple of essere and of stare. So in this case, it refers to stare because you can't use bene with essere, as, as I've already explained. So in this case, it's uh, sono stata, it's not essere, it's the past of stare. Andiamo avanti. So, buono. Buono also translates to good. It's an adjective. So adjective means that it has to agree in gender, so masculine, feminine, and number, singular or plural, with whatever it is describing. So it will become buono, buona. Buoni or buone. Some examples. Questo gelato è molto buono. This ice cream is very good. Buona giornata. Have a good day. This is a very, very useful expression as well. You say when you are leaving a shop or when you are leaving somebody you've been talking to and you want to wish them a good day. So instead of just saying ciao or arrivederci, you say buona giornata. And in the evening, it would be buona serata. Another example. Bisogna usare ingredienti di buona qualità per avere dei buoni risultati. So it's in all the examples I've given you, you can see that it's an adjective and it agrees. So in the first one, uh, gelato, buono, gelato is masculine singular, buono, masculine singular, buona, feminine singular, giornata feminine singular. Buona qualità, good quality. Buona, feminine singular. Uh, qualità, feminine singular. Buoni risultati. Buoni, uh, masculine plural. Risultati, masculine plural. Bene, andiamo avanti. So, bravo. Bravo, bravo, you've done really well. <laughs> so that's that's how you would say it in, in English. Or I would be saying that if you were a man watching this. Bravo, because it's masculine singular. It has many meanings depending on the context. It can mean good, capable, skilled, talented. And it's often used to praise someone for their abilities or their achievements. So it's something I, I often use uh, in my lessons. It's also an adjective. So that's the, that's the tricky bit when there's words in Italian that you're used to seeing in English as well, that you know, bravo, but it is actually an adjective. So it has to agree when you use it in Italian with what you are talking about. So in gender and number. So, sei molto bravo a suonare il pianoforte. You're very good at playing the piano. Bravi! Bravi! Well done, you all. <clears throat> and bravi, it's masculine plural. But remember, you use the I, the masculine plural ending, to refer to a group of uh, that is mixed, male and female. And then another a nice expression is Fai la brava, mi raccomando. That's something you would tell um, some, somebody you want them to be good. <laughs> um, and mi raccomando is a very common expression in Italian that sounds a bit weird because it's me, like to me, I recommend. But it actually means I advise you. I recommend you do something. Um, so it's just translated normally as please, but that's why I've written the literal translation of I advise. So, fai la brava. For example, my lovely cat Peggy now is um, using... She's playing with her little toy. Um, and I don't want her to make a lot of noise because I'm recording a video. So I said, Peggy, fai la brava, mi raccomando. Allora, bello. Generally, bello 
which is also an adjective, translates to beautiful, nice, lovely, but also, you guessed it, good. <laughs> it's mainly used to describe something or someone aesthetically pleasing or attractive. It has many other meanings as well, which we will look at. But let's start with aesthetics. Questo dipinto è molto bello. This painting is very beautiful. L'Italia è così bella. Italy is so beautiful. Then, physical appearance. Mio marito è proprio bello. <laughs> My husband is really handsome, so you can say about you can say that somebody's bella or bella. La mia gatta è troppo bella. My cat is really beautiful. And this is a very good way in which you can also say um, very or really instead of saying molto or veramente. You can say troppo, too beautiful. She's too beautiful. Um, moving on, you can also use bello to describe the weather. È una giornata davvero bella oggi. It's a really beautiful day today. Another thing you can say is fa bel tempo oggi. It's lovely weather today. Occhio, again, occhio. <laughs> Bello becomes bel when it's in front of a noun. So it's not bello tempo, it's bel tempo. If you had it the other way around, you would say il tempo è bello oggi. But if it's in front, you say bel. Then, positive qualities in a non-physical sense. So, il film ieri sera era bello. The film last night was good, great. Ho appena letto un bel libro. Again, the thing of, it's if it's in front of the noun, you put bel and not bello. I've just read a good book. So, things that are creative things, like films or books, you can use bello and it doesn't mean beautiful it just means good or great poi positive circumstances è bello sapere che hai superato l'esame di guida do you know what the esame di guida is your driving test <laughs> it's good to know that you passed your driving test è bello so as you can see bello is used for loads of things then, another thing is the same way that in English you'd say nice and something, lovely and something. È bello caldo qui. È bello caldo qui. It's nice and warm in here. Il cucciolo è bello morbido. È bello morbido. It's lovely and soft. The puppy is lovely and soft. Another thing is uh, you can use it to say, and again, you use the, the shortened version, bel, un bel po di, meaning a lot or quite a bit of. This is a true story. <laughs> Ho comprato un bel po di lana al mercato, because I like crocheting. So, yeah. Ho comprato un bel po di lana al mercato. I bought quite a bit of wool at the market. Ieri al concerto c'era un bel po' di gente. There were a lot of people at the concert yesterday. And finally, an emotional experience. Ho passato una bella giornata con te. I had a lovely day with you. Again, adjective, bella giornata. Okay, so now are you ready for the quiz? So, you will have to fill in the blanks. So, again, you have the free PDF that you can download. And you can now, if you want, uh, pause the video and download your PDF and look at it, um, print it out and write it. Or another thing I really recommend is if you can pause the video now and copy these sentences. You can copy them by hand. That's the best way of learning, copying by hand um, and then solving the exercise. Okay, but we will do it together. So I'm giving you the exercise in English underneath and then in Italian. So you have to fill in the word. La festa 
è stata, sono stata proprio, ok, the party was great, I had a really nice time. We will look at the answers in a second. <laughs> Mario è veramente un mm, cuoco. I suoi risotti sono proprio... Mario is a really great cook, so we're talking about his ability as a cook. So his talent as a cook. His risottos are truly good. That should be an, an easy one. Then, hai capito... La lezione. Hai capito la lezione? Infatti, siete tutte delle studentesse. So, well done! You understood the lesson. In fact, you guys are all good students. So, notice that siete tutte delle studentesse. So, you have an E ending. So that means it's feminine plural. So your word there would need to be a feminine plural word because it all has to agree. Poi, ho appena scoperto un mm, ristorante. I've just discovered a good restaurant. So pay attention that in this case, it's in front of the, of the noun. Si mangia... Gli ingredienti sono di qualità. The food is good. The ingredients are good quality. I've, I've intentionally repeated the word good here. So I, I didn't want to use any other words. So you can just understand the translation. Okay. Vediamo the answers. So... La festa è stata bella, because it's festa. Sono stata proprio bene. Sono stata proprio bene. I had a really nice time. The party was great. Mario è veramente un bravo cuoco. I suoi risotti sono proprio buoni. Mario is a really great cook. His risotti are truly good. Brava! Hai capito la lezione? I didn't give you... Well, actually, we had already used bravo masculine for cuoco, so in this case, it would have to be the brava um, in the feminine. Infatti, siete tutte delle brave studentesse, plural feminine. Um, ho appena scoperto un bel ristorante. Bel and not bello because it's in front. Si mangia bene. You, can, you eat really good. You eat really good. One eats good. Si mangia. Si is impersonal. One eats good. The ingredients are good quality. Gli ingredienti sono di buona qualità. Okay, but that's not all. There's another little part of the test. Of the quiz. It's not a test, it's a quiz. <laughs> so, um, I, I, I'm giving you a couple of sentences that you might need, you might be able to use when you're on holiday. You can say the concert or the show or if you've gone to see something. The concert was great and there were quite a lot of people. Mm. In this case, you'll use un bel po' di, bella, bello or bene. Okay. Numero due. Thanks. For the lovely evening, we had a great time. Remember, in this one, you wouldn't translate the word time. Okay. And the last one. Today is a lovely day. The sun is out. Again, this one, remember, it's not translated. You don't, you could translate it literally, but there is another way that you can translate it. Okay. Sei pronto? Sei pronta? Ok, so, il concerto è stato bello. The concert was great. E c'era un bel po' di gente. And there was quite a lot of people. Uh, thanks for the lovely evening. Grazie per la bella serata. We had a great time. 
Siamo stati molto bene. So, lovely evening, evening in this sense, you wouldn't say sera like buonasera because serata is the duration of the evening. So, that's why you say bella serata, siamo stati molto bene. So, you don't say ho avuto tempo, no, you would say siamo stati molto bene, we were very good. And the last one, oggi si sta bene. Oggi si sta bene, c'è un bel sole. Today is a lovely day, the sun is out. Okay, so now let me know which ones you got right. And remember to um, download your free PDF. And if you want, you can also, you will also get some tiramisu to cheer you up. And I hope you enjoyed this lesson, that it was useful, and ci vediamo alla prossima. Ciao, ciao!